here it is. All right, my name is uh, Joe Whitchurch, and I'm with Rocio Christie as a Campus Ministries Director for our National Movement. And I'm here today with my friend, Carla Brown. And Carla works at The Ohio State University. So I'm over here at uh, Purdue University and Lafayette, West Lafayette vicinity. And she's at Columbus, Ohio with a colleague, uh, Eric Chabot, and, and others, uh, volunteers and friends at The Ohio State. And I have been hearing, um, First of all, Carla and I are connected through the Calvary Chapel movement. We both go to Calvary Chapel churches and have mutual friends here at Harvest Chapel where I, I attend. Um, but um, I have been hearing on uh, Facebook and other social media of a thing that strikes me as like revival, frankly. I mean, I may be overstating it or people associate different things with revival, but something like maybe as many as 40 different students uh, wanting to uh, follow Christ um, last semester at Ohio State University and maybe around 20 thus far this semester, which is rapidly coming to an end through uh, an activity they've been doing there that a lot of chapters do with less fruit uh, in terms of salvation or co converts uh, called tabling. So Carla, uh, welcome. How are you this morning? I'm doing okay. Thanks Good. for having me. How did we first meet? Do you remember? It was a, was it a I think yeah. you had come to a Frank Turek event. Maybe I don't have enough faith to be an atheist at Ohio State. And that yeah, was that was fun. I do remember that. Frank Turek speaking at Ohio State. I think I have a picture of me with Frank, but there's another student in the picture who also wanted to have a picture with Frank. And I think that's the only time me and that student were ever pictured together because I don't think we even met each other, but we both met Frank. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And I think there's a nice picture somewhere in social media of the two of us. And that was that was fun. And your your son, I think, was with you that day or maybe your son and daughter. Or... Yes, my son was with me. That was fun. That was fun. Well, um, so tell us a little bit about Ratio Christie and... Uh, and what is tabling? <laughs> so Ratio Christi is a student organization. Um, it's a student alliance on campus where we teach students how to defend their faith or we talk to students about their faith from a historical, scientific and philosophical aspect. So we're not um, technically like a Bible study or anything like that. We we specifically deal with those academic disciplines and we come alongside other groups as well um, to bring speakers onto campus, maybe have debates, which we would call dialogues, okay. perhaps lectures, things like that. So we're both basically an equipping ministry as well as an outreach. Excellent. I think you said that very well. Uh, that is what we do, and that's what we like to do, <laughs> and what God's called us to do. But uh, it seems like the catalyst for things have changed with COVID and campus restrictions and, and you can't have as many in-person meetings or any in-person meetings at some colleges and, and there's masking and there's distancing and some places can't even do uh, what we call tabling. Uh, uh, but apparently you are able to do tabling, but most of our people here may not know what tabling is and what your restrictions are at Ohio State and how you do that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about tabling and and how you're able to do a workaround related to COVID stuff? Well, basically it involves a table. Um, we bring it out to campus and as we're a registered student org at Ohio State, so long as we have a student with us, we're allowed to set up on the actual campus. If, if we don't have a student, we can set up, um, typically this past year, we've set up outside of the law building and it's a, been a very busy area. And we will put our tablecloth out with our title on it. And then we will um, have a whiteboard. And on the whiteboard, it will say, uh, we'll have a question of the day and it will, for example, one of our um, most recent questions has been, does God exist? And then we'll have different categories um, saying, yes, no, I don't know. Um, <laughs> 35. Hey, can you hear Corey's phone ringing in the next room? 
<laughs> no, that was that was my son coming in. Um, I, I just wondered if you could hear noise through my end. Uh, somebody's calling is not getting the hint that he's not home. Oh, I can't hear. <laughs> it. Um, but anyways, what, what we use the question of the day as an icebreaker. And yeah. so a student will stop and will say, hey, would you be willing to take our survey? And then we'd mark yes, no, I don't know. Um, one of our favorite questions would be, are you a good person? And then if they would say yes, we would launch into a whole discussion of what does it mean to be good? And what we're doing is basically a form of pre-evangelism where we're seeking to knock down the barriers that would prevent someone from really being willing to give the gospel a fair hearing. Um, and that's, that's part of what, what we're doing. Yeah, removing obstacles that keep them from considering the claims of Christ. So you say, would you be willing to participate in our uh, question of the day? Does God exist? Yes, no, uh, don't know. And uh, are you basically a good person? Yes, no, uh, whatever. And so you're doing pre-evangelism because you're setting up the conversation. I'm, I'm summarizing what you said there. I hope yes. I'm not putting words in your mouth. That sounds pretty exciting. And you do that cold turkey sometimes in front of the law building and sometimes in another location on campus that has high foot traffic. Yes. That's wonderful. So do you use a whiteboard then for the question? Uh, yes, we use whiteboard and dry erase marker. Um, well, during COVID, put, of course, we would mark for the students. Um, so they don't have to touch the thing. Right, to, right. We yeah. have our masks on and yes. <laughs> okay, yes. cool. Very cool. So you then you use tally marks too? Yes, we'll just right. tally them up. And we usually get people in all different categories, so. Okay, so, but I'm assuming it doesn't just end there. Well, who else, you said a student is involved if you're gonna be on campus and that's that's required and that's cool because we want students involved, right? That's what we're about, student leadership. But then staff like yourself and Eric, um, and then there's some volunteers. Did I hear uh, uh, some local pastors were, were involved or was is that? A youth pastor, yes, um, pastor Mike from one of our local churches comes down very frequently and he is a very gifted evangelist and he has wound up praying with a, a ton of students these past yeah. semesters. Way cool. I was telling somebody just the other day at an apologetic seminar I was leading in uh, Palatine, Illinois, that I can talk about all this evidence for God's existence, for the truthfulness of the gospel, the resurrection, the necessity of the new birth. But when I ask people if they're ready to become a Christian now, uh, I think they're so into me as being in teacher mode that they typically don't respond or they don't know how to respond or they don't know what I'm really asking them. But if at the end of my presentation, I ask someone like Pastor Tom Camp, who you know, yes. or uh, another another friend who has a real heart and gift for evangelism, if they would give some closing comment, they'll usually say something like, well, you've all heard what Joe had to say. And it's very important that you know God and that you... Uh, turn from yourself to trust Christ, then people will respond <laughs> if somebody else says it. Uh, yeah. And it's so interesting because I feel like, you know, I have a heart for evangelism and I love doing the work of an evangelist, but I am not really an evangelist, but these people are. So do you do that at your table where you're asking questions and then you may hand off to Pastor Mike or to, uh, to Eric or a uh, have, have you had a chance to pray with uh, any students or? Uh, I have, yes. Um, you have. And, and sometimes right. sometimes um, each one of us will be talking to a different student. So it's good to have a lot of people there. But yes, there, there comes a, a point in time where I'll just ask them, say, well, what do you think of this or whatever? And the last uh, student that I actually spoke with, she said, so what's the point? And then I went on to explain how, you know, I'm called to be an ambassador of Christ and I'm here to reconcile you with God. And so I was able to lead her in a prayer. She had been raised um, as a Zoroastrian. And so it was quite a different message for her, but she was able to receive it. And every now and then that happens where they're ready to say, okay, I'm in. Zoroastrianism. That's a good international student from the Middle East, I assume? Or? Yeah, she was from India. Way cool. How fun that must have been to, to pray with her. Now, um, a lot of times people associate evangelism and decisions or prayers with going to a church and uh, there's a, a 
very emotional appeal and they turn down the lights and they turn up the music and they don't let anybody escape. And <laughs> this is a stereotype people, have. but you're out in the open air, right out in front of God and man and everybody else in a university in front of a law school. And, and, uh, and people are talking to you about the hard questions they have. And, and the Lord has opened up these doors for you. That is pretty amazing. But, you know, people, I was asking myself the other day, I said, okay, oh yeah, there's 20 people this semester or maybe 40 people last semester, but this is, you know, it's just hit and run. It's a one and done. They come by that you're going to ask them to click the thing. Uh, do you think you believe in God? No. Yes. If they say yes, and they're counting them as a convert and I'm thinking, I don't, I know Eric Chabot. I know Carla Brown. I don't think they do business like this, but, but I did wonder in my mind when I heard a number, I thought, uh, do they have names for these people? Do they know these people's names? Or is this just a project thing? And, and I got an email today before we agreed several days ago that we do this interview today. Uh, but I got an email from Eric just today. And I think you have maybe 15 uh, different names of people and a couple of stories of the context of what was going on in their lives. And I thought, Praise the Lord. They're in contact yeah. with these people. So uh, have, has there been any encouraging uh, fruit for you subsequent to some of these uh, conversations that you've seen in, in students' lives in terms of any responses? Or there ongoing? was a student um, yeah. not too many weeks back that had prayed to receive Christ. And then I was able to connect him with my campus church. And he has already visited our Wednesday night home group. And then I saw him a couple Sundays ago at Sunday morning. And oh. so hoping to link them in with people that can offer discipleship. Oh. Um, we had another student who had been a Mormon and we dialogued and dialogued for many, many months. And he eventually left the LDS church and we are still in communication with him. Eric will meet with students one-on-one. -on -one. I will meet with students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, yeah. We, I'm always giving phone numbers, you know, offering follow-up, inviting to church. We realize it's not just a say a prayer and you're done sort of deal. Yeah, yeah. I knew you knew that, but it's fun to hear what you're doing. Now, you said when you meet with students one-to-one, -one, are you able to meet with them at an on-campus fast food restaurant or a coffee place, or, or where are you able to meet with our current uh, restrictions? Or what, what? We have some restaurants that are open for in-person dining. The last place yeah. I met with a student was First Watch. First Watch. Um, what yes. is that, like a coffee shop or a? It's a, a brunch and breakfast place. Brunch and breakfast, okay. Yes, and so I think like Eric meets franchise. with, um, I think he meets, you know, the, different places are open like Panera or we have our student union. While you can't like walk through and, and buy food in line, you can sit in the student dining area and meet with people. So we do have some places. Ohio is a little bit more open, I think, than Great. certain places. Well, I know your chapter has done Zoom meetings and I've been on some of them. One was very good recently. I can't remember who it was, but it was on critical race theory. I go to so many conferences and things, but has there been any um, particular standout meeting of the year that was fun for you that was online? There have been so many good meetings. Eric has done a tremendous job bringing That's in. I thought about getting him on the guest. What's that? I thought about getting him on the call. He's very good. And uh, yes, um, I, I really enjoyed Clay Jones and his yeah. talk on death. death. <laughs> yes. Um, we had Christopher Yuan talking about same sex attraction, things like that. And I, I just, go? that was just really good. Um, yeah, all of our meetings have been I heard just great information and yeah. Well, thank, thanks for being willing to uh, to be interviewed today. If somebody wanted is from Ohio State and wanted to get in touch with the chapter there, is there some contact information you could give them and a uh, way to get a hold of you or Eric or the chapter or a web page that you'd like to share before we close? Sure. Um, well, they can go to ratiochristi.org and search for Ratio Christi Ohio State or Columbus State Community College. We also have a Facebook page. Rachel Christie at the Ohio State University, and they'd be welcome to contact us. We'll give them more information, anything they would need. Thank you so much, Carla. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording here, and we'll get a chance to visit a little bit more, but thanks for being with me today.
Thanks for having me. God bless.